In DC, for DC. DC Radio, 96.3 HD4 and DCRadio.gov. What's up, good people? How are you today? How are you today? Yes, it is Anthony Chippy Caldwell here on DC Radio. <laughs> Wait till y'all hear who I got in the studio today. I'm so excited. First of all, I want to give a shout out to all of my DC Radio family, uh, Shane and Chaz and uh, Max Myrick and, uh, and Dr. Vicky and everybody here. Um, and uh, of course, Mrs. Malika J. Carwell is in the studio today, making sure everything goes all right. So uh, more over than anything, I am so blessed. I always tell you all, I said, um, I like to bring in people into the studio. Not only that, i possibly have had the opportunity of working with before, but it comes across so differently because even with this platform, I have to go home and do my homework as in terms of, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, they're my friends, but I need to look online and see, oh, wow, I didn't know they were doing that and, and this and this and this. So today I'm so honored and privileged to have the, y'all, if y'all been looking at my social media, I've been calling him the Sonic Scientist. If that drops or if that if that gets any weight to it, uh, you know, I, I, you can send out the royalties to cash out. Gotcha. <laughs> you know? gotcha. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Aaron Harding has, is in the studio today. What's going on, brother? Man, not a whole lot, man. Mr. Groove Works Entertainment me, himself. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So if y'all don't know, um, Aaron Harding is the music director for Reed Temple AME of Glendale, Maryland, and two-time Grammy-nominated artist Eric Robeson. Aaron has been part of a number of recordings, both studio and live, either as a musician or a producer. And we will talk about his production and his musicianship in a moment. Uh, he's been playing and arranging. He has been a part of the Grammy uh, Reimagined, Sore Losers, and Nike Always On, Jesse Boykin's campaigns. Titles Becoming Bobby Fino and Star's hit show Power and major motion film trailers for Cesario and The Foreigner yeah. by Big Crit. Is that right? Yeah. This is the one right here. I said, uh, I said, you, like I said, you never know what your friends and stuff are doing. And I'm so proud of you, brother. He is currently one of the music producers for the third season of Fox Network's The Masked Singer. Ladies and gentlemen, not only is he also, uh, uh, he's uh, the owner of Harden Enterprises LLC, which houses his entertainment company, Groove Works Entertainment. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce to some and present to others the amazing Aaron Harden. What's going on, brother? Hey, man. Good afternoon, everybody, yes, radio indeed. audience, Chuk, all the staff here, man. Yes, I appreciate indeed. y'all for having me. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I'm so glad to have you here, man. So tell us a little bit. So that that's what your um your your backdrop and your bio on paper. Tell us a little bit about you from your mouth to our ears, brother. Man, so um Where did you start? You know where you from? Look, man, I started like the rest of us. I started on on uh on phone books with pencils. And listen. You know what I mean? Tapping, tapping out everything we could tap out. You know what? And you know what? And I'm sorry to interrupt you. What's crazy is I didn't know that you played the different like drums, like all the way official. Like we see him, like we see you a lot, like production and you know, and playing keys on the organ, all of that stuff. Dude, I was like, I was looking at a clip, and I was like, wait a minute, and he's killing. So, <laughs> <laughs> killing myself trying to keep, trying to keep it up, man. It's a whole different ball game out here. These oh, days. man, the, the younger ones, man. Yeah, but man. yeah, so like a little bit of backdrop, like, so where you from and all that good stuff? Originally from Ohio. Oh, okay. Um, a little town called Finley, Ohio. Uh, wow. South of Toledo. Um, spent probably like the first twelve or thirteen years of my life there. Bro, I didn't even um, know that. So yeah, it was. Man, another small town. Mm -hmm. Moved moved out to Salisbury, Maryland, and and I know for uh, the DC metro folk, it'd be like Salisbury is in the middle of the woods, but this town in Ohio was definitely in the middle of the woods. <laughs> right, so, literally. Um, so yeah, man, always just coming from smaller backgrounds, small beginnings, and gotcha. uh, just pushing. Got Loving it, got music it. and and always wanted to be a part of it. So. so how did you get into like wanting to play music and all that stuff as young? And so my um my family. Not too many musicians mm -hmm. uh, in the family that I know of. There, there's some other family that um, we, we're trying to figure out whether or not that's legitimately family. But if they are, that's where the music is gotcha. really is at. Gotcha. Um, Hamilton Harden being one of them. Uh, oh, so, wow. Okay. Um, family was music lovers. I was always around it. Came out the womb just wanting to be around music. Wow. Um, and so I was one of the ones in the family that chased after it. Gotcha. Really, really hard. And... Uh, 
And man, we we were able to make some dreams come true out of it. Yes, so indeed. It's a, it's a so, blessing. what's a little bit of the inspiration about behind um, you playing and uh, well, not not even just playing, but just like your like you said, your your love and the embracing of music. What's a little bit of that imp- inspiration behind that? My dad had a lot to do with it, and I, I know that he got it from I want to say my uncle, uh, a great uncle who had passed. Um, he had this amazing record collection that I mm. think UDC actually took in as historical artifact a few wow. years ago when he passed. Got it. Got um, it. So it was just <clears throat> we were always around music and. Mm. Man, I remember it'd be Friday nights. Me and my dad would stay up to it. So I'd be four or five years old. Man, we'd be staying up till till two, three in the morning, listening to records, watching old Soul Train videos. Yeah, gotcha. the whole vibes, man. And I, I just always loved that form of expression. Got it. I mean, I, I, I started taking lessons probably around five. Okay. And quit around ten. Classical. That was the only thing that we really had around the town that we were at. Got it. Um, and from there it was just like, man, I would. This might have been like 96 ish, 97. Mm-hmm. Um, the Men in Black soundtrack had just came out. <laughs> I, I was like, man, I wanna, one day I'm going to make a song for Will Smith. Right, right, right. And I, I mean, I, I don't know what that was, but I, I, at that point, knew that I wanted to create music. Wow. And, um, and ever since, it's been, it's been a, just something within me that was mm-hmm. always a push to, I mean, let's see if we can make this happen. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. So, what, do you, what is it that you like about it? Um, what is it that, like, because when you produce songs, when you play, like, I've had the experience of, you know, uh, when we've played together, um, even in the very, very beginning when you was driving back and down, yeah, back and man. forth from songs, but I was like, good yeah. gosh, so first and foremost, this cat is dedicated, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and being from, being born and raised here in D.C., for me, I know that I had to, I traveled out, um, you know what I'm saying, and, and traveled with other artists and learned the, um, the element of professionalism, yeah. you know, on uh, being early is on time. Mm-hmm. On time is late, and late yeah. is unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. But I remember, like, we would have gigs, dude, and you would be driving back and forth from Salisbury and mm-hmm. be like one of the first ones at the gigs, all set up, <clears throat> knew the material, and all of that stuff, you know. And you know, um, I just want to let you know that stuff doesn't go uh, unnoticed, brother. Definitely Real talk, that. you know. Uh, you know, we ain't gonna mention no names, but there's some people who have who have come who have come here uh, not long ago and had to go migrate back to where they came from yeah. because you know it's a uh, uh, DC is a is a is a um, it's an amazing town. I uh, love it. You know, what I'm saying that's where my my roots are. But you got to be on top of your P's and Q's yeah. because you know if you ain't on point, oh trust and believe someone, <laughs> you know probably not even your field will let you know about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm 100%. saying? And so I just wanted to let you know, man, that that has always just been uh, really, really admired. Uh, um, you know when you come in and you just always are, are on point. But what is the? My question is, and like I said, it's a two sided question. Um, what is it that you like about? Uh, being a producer, uh, being um, an amazing musician, and then on the flip side of it, what is it that you don't like about it? Man, the thing that I love about it, uh, like by far, is as as creatives, I feel like we have all this energy, these thoughts, mm-hmm. these feelings inside, and music, uh, art really in general, but for me specifically, music mm-hmm. is the platform to get that out. Wow. I think it's one of the most honest forms of communication that we have as artists to be able to to pour yourself out through notes. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the notes might say more than your words ever could say. Mm. Um, it's mm. for for the people who are really really in tune with uh, their musician heart. I feel like that's that's how you can say things that you you never really even knew. That we're in. It's a subconscious thing. It's to me, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a great form of release. Absolutely. Um, you know, there there's some people who never find the passion or never find the ways to get those things out of themselves, and so wow. music really, really serves um, serves that purpose for me. Gotcha. I can I can look back over uh, songs that I've created over the years and feel what I was feeling at that moment or wow. know kind of where that was coming from. Wow. Um, and I can play it for other people and ask like, hey, so like, what does this make you feel? Mm-hmm. It's like, are you, were, were you going through something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. F- feeling something this, this day. Right, 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 right. And I, I think that's, it's it's always humbling to me that that's the takeaway because mm-hmm. it is an honest form of, you know, this is what my heart is saying and this is what I want to express at this moment. So the mm-hmm. fact that it can even come through 
in that kind of way is is amazing to me. That's and, and real talk, real talk, brother. That's amazing that you even articulate that that way because that's what people need to hear. Like you know, sometimes we just get caught up in <clears throat> we hear a song on the radio or we hear a song in a movie or, or something of that nature, and really don't understand what the producer what place they were in mm -hmm. to even come up with that. Um, I know it's been, you know, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's a challenge, but we love the fact that we can do it. Like if someone sends a song and it's just a, a memo mm -hmm. of just a voice, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I got to come up with the whole, you know what I'm saying? That's why I call you the, 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 the sonic scientist. <laughs> because when I tell you like the, the uh, even, even your spot, um, we, you know, we were getting ready for um, that that uh, uh, concert at. Mm -hmm. uh, it just was comfortable, you know what I'm saying? And like everything that you needed, everything that we needed, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's already an atmosphere of just like, okay, whatever uh, place I need to be in, whatever sound needs to be right here, it's yeah. there. Yeah. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed that, First and foremost, that you know, you took it and took it out of your, your time to be able to come on here oh, on this man. on chopping it up with you. Completely my pleasure, man. <laughs> yeah. I man. It's yeah, it's amazing. Oh, it's man. it's amazing that you have a platform to be able to do this. That's a blessing, brother. Mm -hmm. So and I mean and like I said, I, I always be true to the fact that um I think I did one episode. I did one episode where it was chopping it up with Chew with Chew. <laughs> and that was, <laughs> okay. There was one episode, and mm -hmm. what people didn't know, I was like, you know, it was kind of a catch twenty two because uh, at the last minute, the morning of, the, the artist canceled for that day. Mm -hmm. So rather than me getting stressed and you know and, and losing my mind, I was like, wait a minute, there's a lot of people that take a listen to this show that might have seen you know, and I kind of the the same the the same format as in terms of you know I go and do my homework about you know the artists I have in on the show. I said there's a lot of listeners. Who don't know, you know what 100%. he know about me. So you know, what I'm saying it wasn't like, you know, and I did it in the interview uh, format because my dad says that your bell sounds better when somebody else is ringing it. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. why on this show today I got the amazing Aaron Harden, <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Groove Works Entertainment himself, oh, brother. I want to get into uh, some, you know, some of the people might not have heard some of the the stuff that you've um, you've done. You guys, you got. I know you got a couple of uh, uh, projects out. You did a. Christmas album was it Christmas? Uh, was it an EP? It was yeah. You could call. It, I think by today's standards, it was an EP. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Yeah, it's yeah. Music industry changed a little. bit. How about it? But um, <laughs> yeah, no. It's, uh, I think seven songs. I think that was back in 2011. Got Coming it. Home for Christmas. Got yeah. it, got it. And there's a song on here called "Slay Ride," and he said it's, uh, this one is featuring uh, Ian. Ian McCauley. Ian McCauley. Uh, that's Greg Clark on drums. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Tim Green on sax. That Tim was, Green from, uh, yeah, from Baltimore? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Um, uh, and who else was on that song? Uh, Earl Travis on bass. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Bernice, who um, back and forth with August Green and Glasper and that whole... Got it. Man, he's a whole different... Yeah. Player. Yeah. yeah. So you all, so like I said, I want to uh, let you all hear just a little bit where we're coming from when I talk about this man here is absolutely um, an inspiration to a lot of us as in terms of his, you know, songwriting, production, um, arranging, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So there's this one song, like I said, that we're about to play from uh, his Christmas uh, EP that uh, released. Oh, is it still available? It is still time? available. And and crazy enough, that was a single that was after the fact. It was just, it was an idea that came and it was like, we should probably put this out. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so what is your concept? What is your, what is your concept behind when you are um, producing a song? Spirit, man. Mm. Um, character. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, as producers, sometimes we'll get a, a song and there's just lyrics. Sometimes mm -hmm. there'll just be a melody. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's, hey, you know, I feel like this. I need a song that feels like this. And mm -hmm. it's it's our job to to fill that out, gotcha. like whatever that might be. So a lot of times, um, whether it be a melody or, or a lyric, mm -hmm. it's trying to get inside the character of it and feel mm -hmm. out. Like, how should we approach this? How how can I make a musical bed that feels appropriate for either this subject matter or mm -hmm. this melody? Um, is it bright? Is it dark? Mm -hmm. uh, is it happy? Is it sad? Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, I learned a lot of that from uh, Eric Robertson. Gotcha. Um, just over the years, he he would talk a lot about um, just always being in tune with the character, almost treating it like you were an actor on a stage, mm. on a stage play, mm -hmm. and um, having to feel out what does it take for me to be inside this character? So I'm outside of myself and I'm into whatever this moment or whatever this scene mm -hmm. or whatever this emotion is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I found that over the years, the more authentic you can be with that, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be production or on stage as a musician, mm -hmm. um, like if you're tapping into the spirit of the thing that you're playing or mm -hmm. the character of the thing that you're playing, Y'all need, you'll, to, you'll reach, you'll y'all need reach to hashtag that. Tap into the spirit or the character of it. That yeah. is that. That's very very important because you like, <clears throat> like we just we just did a um we just did a gig recently, and um, we were in sound check, and like when you walked in, like before you even uh, set up your board, you just like he's like you slid into the piano <laughs> and right into where we were, and it's just like the whole. I was like, but that's the that is the. The, uh, one of the um, pure dynamics that you bring to the table mm -hmm. is like um, it's never like you, you, your place is always um, strategically set into the body of the music. And then when you start playing, the way you embellish, it builds it. Like you said, it, it makes it a bit and like you literally tap into the, the, the spirit and the character of the song that we're playing. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's very, very important because, you know, of course, music is a universal language. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing when we are talking behind our instruments on stage. And if anybody's talking too much, you could be like, ugh, be yeah. quiet. You yeah. know what I mean? But it's like you, like the, the words that you say through the music and all of that stuff, man, is to be appreciated. And it pushes each of us to the next level when we're on stage. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's like a perk. You know what I'm saying? A blessing. We're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to play this song, uh, Slay Ride. This is off of, this is off of Aaron's, uh, um, like it's Christmas, um, like I said, it's EP, but there's several songs, so I would call it an album. Cause you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, at the end of the day, Grammys, like, like, we gotta talk about that too, because it's, I think it's changed to like, the, pro the product only has to be, um, 17 minutes or something like something that. Something like that. Yeah, it's, which it's is getting crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm it's saying? Crazy. Next thing you know, it'll be one song Man, nominated right. for a, a yeah. Grammy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go, uh, Slay Ride, uh, here on DC Radio, chopping it up with you.
OMG. <laughs> Brother, Sleigh Ride, you took me to a whole different vibe of uh, Christmas in where? Christmas on uh, St. Patrick's Day. I'm we close it. enough to it. <laughs> yes, indeed. They're both green. Brother, I love that. I love that. Thank and you, the, the, your musicality. Um, we were off the, you know, when the song was playing, we just have so much to talk about. It's, uh, mm-hmm. Um, this is a privilege and an honor to a privilege and an honor to be able to sit down and just chop it up. Man, likewise, and, man. And we not, you know, what, what, what song, what set of songs? You know what I'm saying? This yeah. is this is really, really cool. So I got a question, Aaron. So what do you look at uh as one of your biggest the biggest challenges being uh an artist? Like in the industry, you see a lot, mm. you see a lot of the ins and outs. What do you see um or what has posed to you? to be one of the biggest challenges as being an artist? I think the biggest challenge right now is trying to get a handle on where the music industry is at. Mm-hmm. If we talk about being strategic, um, even with playing, uh, when we when we expand that to the artist side of things, we got to be strategic with how we're rolling something out or how we're releasing material so that it's not, you know, just throwing it out to the air and hoping that it goes somewhere. Gotcha. Um, I think over the last, I mean, we can call it probably like a decade now, mm-hmm. um, music and the way you release it, how much music you release, the mm-hmm. length of the songs that you do that you do release, mm-hmm. like all that stuff has changed right. drastically. Right. Um, uh, the attention span of listeners has changed drastically. Like That's true. We, we've looked at songs going from, it used to be, all right, if you want to play a song on the radio, four minutes is the cutoff, to, hey, make it three and a half, right, to right. make it three. And now we're like, somewhere between two, two and a half minutes yeah. per song. Yeah. It's, it's That cuts down on the amount of material you write in a song. Mm-hmm. Um, am I doing a bridge? Nah, because it's, I mean, we're at 148 right now, so how right. am I going to fit that in? Right. Um, and it's just trying to understand, number one, what that means to even get a product. Mm-hmm. Number two, once we put it out, um, what are we doing to monetize? Mm. How, how are we making that back? Because right. um, they don't have record stores and stuff like that the way it used no to be. No record stores and these streams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Point oh 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 four yeah, cent yeah, a play, yeah. and it takes it takes a lot to to really pull it off. And it's not to say that you can't be successful because I've had some conversations mm-hmm. with some artists who have been in that heyday mm-hmm. and have seen the mainstream success versus what success looks like now. Gotcha. Um, so and, how do so how do we what are some of the suggestions that you bring to the table about how we monetize? Things now, I think it's just conversation. Gotcha. Like our community owes it to ourselves to continually have that conversation, mm. so that we're aware of where things are at and what methods are working, mm-hmm. um, what we need to do. I don't know that any one person has the answer. Gotcha. But we've seen people tap into parts of the answer and be successful with that. Got it. What if we you know, were constantly uh, meeting up and, and having those conversations that now we can all attack this new mm. system and you know, whatever part of the industry that I understand or the system that I understand versus the part that you understand. Got it. Like, if we put all that together, like, what do, what do we come up with? That's what are true. we able to accomplish? That's true. Um, so I think it's just, it's on us to continue to push that conversation. And that's, um, really, that's really true, too, brother, because uh, we're learning just how the music and entertainment industry has diversified and changed up, we have to make sure that we stay diversifying and changing up our yeah. format. And you just hit a, a big nail on the head talking about the um, the relationships and the communication and the open dialogue. Um, a couple of shows, talk, I can't even remember who uh, was on the show, but we were talking about the the dialogue that has, you know, fallen between the cracks with, like, the artists in D.C. and the venues, mm-hmm. you know. Um, we have a couple of venues now that are still open to, you know, um, plus, plus in D.C., well, we were just mentioning that a lot of the venues that um, had live music, you know, we have some new ones opening up, but those new ones have to build their brand yeah. and all that stuff. And how's the equipment? And uh, how's your marketing? Is mm-hmm. this a place where, you know, um, uh, walk by, passes by, can, you know, and stuff of that nature. And opening up this dialogue to the places that we can perform in D.C. to help to monetize. Yeah. And then also, um, like you said, like diversifying. And uh, if you stay gigging and, you know, uh, within reason. And when I say stay gigging within reason is because uh, 
Sometimes, you know, and this is for everywhere, you know, of course we've experienced it here in the DMV, but I think this is all over the place uh, where sometimes when an artist is from a town, uh, a lot of times the town doesn't come and support them monetarily the way they could mm -hmm. because they'd be like, well, we can go and see him at the, the Piggly Wiggly yep. for free on yep. Friday night and he's going to be playing from 8 to 1 in the morning. Yep. Right, you know, but I, I got this, I got this, this little album, I'm only selling it for four bucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, well, I know you're going to play all of them songs on Friday. So, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just like coming up with that balance of how to, um, how to make things, you know, um, as a full-time artist and entrepreneur, uh, because you have Groove work, GrooveWorks Entertainment where you do production. So what is the difference between, because um, your resume is, is amazing, but what is the difference between um, producing or collaborating with an up-and-coming artist rather than someone who's already established? Man, um, I, I'll say that I've been blessed enough with the established artists that I've worked with for them to be open. Mm -hmm. But more times than not, when it's an up-and-coming artist, mm -hmm. it's a blank slate. They might mm -hmm. have an idea of what they want, but they don't have the experience or the know-how necessarily. Right. Um, you know, they could be read up on some things and they could have, have dibbled and dabbled in music, but they're the they're the open canvas to like, yeah. all right, let's let's try some new colors on this. Yeah. Like because maybe Maybe we can come into something. And I've found that that relationship that you're able to stoke when it's, we're building this from the ground up. Hmm. And now the things that you're hearing, you can you can give me the ideas that you have and I'm putting these with my ideas. And it's like, it's collaborative on a different level. Yeah, it is. Um, because again, you're, you're not coming from, you're not necessarily coming from a place of information. Gotcha. Got so you. it's now it's now it's just ah oh, we don't have rules to play by now. Right, right, now right, can, right. Let's let's <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that opens up that 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 uh, that creativity. I was just talking the other day. I was like um, the difference between, and it was kind of similar to the, the question I just asked you, but the difference between producing for a person who was a musician mm -hmm. and the, uh, versus. Producing, like you said, with someone who just like, well, you know, I got an idea. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's two totally different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, the, the the I guess the kind of the catch sometimes is the one with the mu who's the musician uh, sometimes has a budget. Mm -hmm. You know, and those <laughs> who are just getting their feet wet, you know, unless, you know, they have investors and stuff of that nature. Because the thing about it is um, people don't understand. So when you are creative... Uh, things around can't be um, uh, topsy turvy, yeah. Because you got to be able to tap into a zone yeah. to tap into that spirit or that character of that song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's that's always very very important. So even in like the DMV, what have been some of the venues that you've liked the atmosphere at? Ah uh, man, the, the new spot wise, um, I'm really I really appreciate what they did with. Um, the Harlot, which is formerly, I think the ground level was Tap and Parlor, but you know, oh, downstairs gotcha, gotcha. was Bohemian, upstairs was Live. Um, the aesthetic of it, it just, it looks like something that should be in LA. Really? It, it so has I, haven't that, been, I haven't been inside yet. Oh, man. So it's the first, the first floor. First floor. Really? Yeah. The aesthetic of it, it's 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 different from what we've seen. Okay. Um, it it feels like it's something for creatives. It seems like it's an artsy place for, for us to be able to go into Got and, it. and really just, you know, yeah, lay yeah, loose. Yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's no pressure to... You, I, and I mean, I feel like I initially heard with Bohemian, they wanted to go back to like this uptight, everybody comes in in suits and like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the demographic we want. It doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like you have to go in and, and um, you know, present something that you're not as a creative. So. Man, I did. Well, so it's a nice vibe in there. Sucks. I need to go up there. Yeah, it was, I, passed, I, I passed by, you know, and saw that, they, like you said, that they changed the name, but hadn't had an opportunity to go inside. I was like, yeah. you know, I don't want to say we didn't have a reason to go inside, but we always have a reason to go inside of the different establishments and stuff in the DMV area because there are some establishments that, um, uh, like Aaron, like you just said, that have the aesthetics of... Um, 
being very conducive for a creative, mm-hmm. but they might not have had the idea of having creatives come in there yeah, yeah. and, you know, and do anything of that, you know, of that nature. So, um, yeah, so I'm definitely going to check that out. That's that was that was one of my questions. Like, what are your favorite, uh, you know, uh, venues, past or present? So that's yeah. like a little bit. Yeah, that, that gives you a little bit of both. Yeah, and and I know it's a it's a brand and they're they're national, mm-hmm. but um, City Winery Man has been. Yeah. Great for DC. It's put it's put some pressure on some other venues around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's their their treatment um, and their willingness to open themselves up to the locals. Yeah, is yeah. different from what I've seen in yeah. some other venues that are hailed as like yeah, historic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's there's been a number of venues around this area where it's you you got to pull some strings to yeah, get yeah. in. Um, City Winery mm-hmm. was willing, like, if if you want to give it a shot, um, you present the right thing to us, uh, we'll take a chance. You, Man, you shout brand, out, yeah. shout out to, uh, uh, another shout out to uh, Max Myrick and also to Frank Sheffield, who um, have been very, very instrumental in getting, um, you know, a lot of the old local artists um, on that platform at yeah. City Winery. And I like the way they did City Winery here because, like, the different levels of, I didn't know you know, when I was, I went to a couple of shows and I went straight up to the big room. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about the wine garden. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that you could perform. Uh, RC, the homie RC, you know, was mm-hmm. in town. They performed in the middle, and I was like, "Is that a glass door over there?" So it's like when it gets warm, they can open yep. that up. I was like, yep. "Got it. Okay, yep. okay." So, uh, shout out to City Winery, uh, all of the city wineries, um, but definitely the one here in yes, DC. We really appreciate that. I want to get into some more music, man. I want to get into. Um, you got a song uh, called "I See You." Yeah. What's the What's the backdrop behind this one, brother? So this was another interesting collaboration. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the artist, her name is Candace Dillard, and she's one of the Housewives of Potomac. Got it, got it, got um, it. So she got married uh, going on two years ago, about a year and a half ago, and um, she had mentioned wanting to. She said, "I want to sing a song, an original song." at my reception for my husband. Wow. I said, okay. Um, so she brought a couple of us in. It was myself, Vita Wisnan, and Cliff Ross. Shout out, I shout helped. out, Vita yeah, and Cliff. Yeah, yeah. Love y'all, I love y'all. Y'all um, already know. Yeah. That's family. <laughs> always, always. She brought us in, mm-hmm. and uh, she already had words. She just needed song structure and, and uh, vocal production. Got it. And um, we, needed, we needed some music to put together with it. Um, and they opened up whatever they needed to open up to to get the people involved. So we got live string section on there. We we what? were able to get our hands on one of the foremost man. This dude, this mixing engineer that we had mixed this song. He he made me understand why we pay so right, much <laughs> to certain people. Um, but I mean, his his resume speaks for itself as well. Um, ben Kane. Uh, uh, he assisted on D'Angelo's Grammy yeah. winning album and yeah. all the PJ and Emily Kings, all that, all that stuff, um, is his sonic sound. So he's he's the real si- <laughs> sonic sound. <scientist. laughs> I'm just a dude. We try you to come you, with you've been carrying man. the torch, brother. Hey, man, doing our best. But um, we put that song together for her wedding, and um, yeah, it's it it was an awesome collaboration, man. Wow, awesome let's take a listen to it. This yeah. is I See You. Um, this is produced by you and yeah. everything. So listen, mm, Grooveworks Entertainment on deck here on Chopping It Up with Chuke on DC Radio. For granted, 
and his beauty is pushed aside. A world where people would rather be distant, they come together and compromise. In a world where fears try to consume you, and little petty things get in the way. One thing's clear, one thing's true, through it all. So we playing the song in, in the station, and it's so musical and it feels so good that we all like looking around and the station is like, man, you hear this? You hear this? You hear this? I'm trying to tell you, man, this, this guy is killing. This guy is killing. So listen, brother. So that's that's amazing how you can take, well, like you you said it before, tapping into the spirit and the character of the of the artist um, of the song that was being written. So did she? You said she had ideas like the lyrics, and then you all. So really what happened was she she had written down everything that she wanted to say to her husband. And it was literally just they shaped the words and they put it in song form pretty much. Got but it. The, the majority of that was all her words. Wow, we so her that's, authentic feeling and all that, man. Yeah. Wow, come on, brother. That's a, that's amazing. That's the things, like I said, that I love. Um, because uh there's nothing um, that can replace or duplicate experience. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and because um, we, we know there's some tracks that we've done years ago when we were first getting it up under our belt. We was uh-huh. like, ah! Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and then also being careful that because of the inspiration and the, the gigs that we're on and all that stuff, that when we go to, rec- that when we go to create, that we make sure that Oh, wait a minute. I was like, when that that little section right there, that sounds like that's the gig coming up Friday. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it takes time to um a balance to be able to balance yourself to be able to like to say, wait a minute, now, in this moment, I need to clear my mind of mm-hmm. everything else, and I need to be able to tap into just this. Man, that's such an important thing because it's hard. If you're if you're working like that, mm-hmm. The amount of gigs, the amount of services, everything that you're involved in, mm-hmm. like to not regurgitate some of that. Exactly. Is, it man, it's it's an exercise. Well, brother, you're yeah. definitely doing an amazing job. And man, you know I would not have you in here in the studio and we don't, you know, have uh, an opportunity. Uh-huh. So look, so before so, but before we play anything, what's um what's some songs that have just impacted your life? Like, give me three songs that have impacted your life over a lifetime. Mm. 
do, 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 do. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, the, oh God, there's so many. There was one in particular. I remember I was making a drive to Pennsylvania. This was, man, I was like, I think I was fresh out of high school. <laughs> um, and this was the first song that ever made me, like, I turned the radio off after this. Really? I never heard this song before. Um, wonderful, beautiful, amazing. Um, uh, produced by DJ Rogers Jr. It was featuring uh, NDRE, though. And um, I don't know what it was in that moment, but it was just like after I heard that, I was, all right, I, I need to chill for a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and those have always, the ones that make you stop mm -hmm. have always been, I mean, I, I feel like any of us as musicians, we've heard enough music that we could point to a million songs that, you know, we, we relate to or identify with or really, really enjoy. But those ones that, like, pause you in your tracks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was that was definitely one of them. Um, ooh, I, I hate favorite questions. <laughs> um, mm. Well, I could interject one. I could interject one. Like even the even uh, you saying that song, one song that I heard that literally changed my life and had me stop just like that was um, the way you are, uh, Billy Joel. Mm. You know and. Uh, I heard it. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. I was like, Phew. and it felt. It, I didn't. I, I didn't see the YouTube clip. I heard it on the radio. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just like the way these changes are going. By the time they got to the bridge and all that stuff and turned back around, I was like, when the song went off, I said, I just need to chill for a moment. Yeah, yeah. It put yeah. me in a whole different place. So I do understand that, brother. <laughs> yeah. You uh, know, another one for me was. Uh, Ah, uh, man, and this is a, a super unknown known group for some of us. Mute Math. They Mute had a math. song called Odds. Odds. Mute Math. Yeah. So, well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to, uh, everybody, math. hashtag. These are the songs. And so also, when I ask people these songs, these are also songs that really is important for us to go and look up. Like, you know what I'm saying, when the show is done, because if it had a certain effect on these artists that I'm bringing in here, and mm -hmm. we're learning from you all's journey. Yes. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a reason behind that. Yeah. So, Mute Math Odds. Trust and believe, I already wrote it down. <laughs> uh, and two, uh, well, one other song, and then there's a project. It's been the project probably over the last two years that, like, every time I listen to it, it's, like, the first time. It's just, like, I, I don't think I've ever heard anything like it. So, right. the, the one song being... Um, there's a girl named um, Zinnia Massanea, I think is how you pronounce her last name. Um, she's a former Berkeley student, um, phenomenal person, number mm -hmm, one. But mm -hmm. she has this song called When It's Over that um, uh, there's there's beauty in that thing, man. Like she, really? She's really, really special. I know here recently, like in R&B world, female R&B world, uh, there's been a lot of talk about the Janae's and the Snow Allegra's and, and all of them. She is the untapped one of those that just gotcha. nobody I don't think I don't think they know about her yet really and I think when she takes off it's gonna be scary oh wait listen it's important to listen to y'all y'all hearing it from this cat here <laughs> Mr. Aaron Harden because I remember like uh, there was some was some years ago we were on the cruise mm -hmm. and before I really knew who like Shantae Can was mm -hmm. you know so next thing you know uh, me you and Shantae uh, we were down in the in rehearsal piano. Yeah. the piano bar we know that when we got down there it had to be like 10, 11 o'clock when we came out it was definitely light outside Man. and we were down Man. there for hours yeah. and just going going so brother so with all of this musicality uh, and all of this stuff so this is y'all this is going to be a true impromptu moment right here on <laughs> Chopping Up With Chuke. So what you feeling? Uh, we got volume and stuff? And... Yeah. We do. We do. And whatever, you know, whatever we go. <laughs> hmm. 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 What, 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 what spirit you in, man? I'm busy talking about spirits and characters, man. Where are you, where are you at today? I mean, you know, each key, you know, has a different feel. So what, Very true. Yeah, what, uh, what key you feeling today? Uh-huh. This gonna be fun, y'all. Y'all yeah, gonna watch let's, out. Let's go, let's go deep. Let's go somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
the sonic scientist. <laughs> Oh, brother, brother, I don't want to call that to me. Listen, so how are we going to take those little bit of chords and come up and change the whole atmosphere in this room? Oh, oh man, that's so man. fun. <laughs> this, is the, this is the chemistry and stuff that is so important. And like you said earlier on, it's very, very important because we have to make sure that we keep the communication and conversations open with our, um, with our community, yeah. with our entertainment community. And the thing about it is it... Uh, it transcends the different barriers. It transcends the different genres of music. It transcends, it transcends the different um, uh, departments. We have musicians. You got the vocalists. You got the songwriters. You got the arrangers. You have the you got the publicists. Mm -hmm. You have the management. You have the venues and all that stuff. And there's so many different departments that we don't open up uh, open dialogue. Yeah. And you know, and there's so many things in the DMV area that we are. Um, you know, could have access to, but if you don't know, mm -hmm. then you, you're always like in your own backyard, you know, uh, struggling or, you know, so grinding, not, not always struggling, but grinding and always trying to make it happen, trying to make it happen. And it does happen, but then there's a different format where if we just, uh, like I said, just open up the, the floodgates and, and open up these conversations to more people who are in our arena, we have a better chance of getting ahead. A lot and I think mm -hmm. that's super important. Uh, Really just from the standpoint that we got to remember to do those things. Gotcha. Because I think in today's industry, mm -hmm. it's like there's such a thing of, yo, man, you got to learn how to do it, man. If you're going to do your marketing, you got to do your marketing yourself because, you know, all, all it is is social media, man. You know, I mean, do do your piece. Right. They're, they're, all the artists now are trying to be producers. All the, you know, the producers are trying to be artists or right. managers. And it's... I understand the importance of trying to figure out all the individual components right. so that you have an idea of what that should look like. Right. It's also difficult from the standpoint of, you know, that's not the background you come from. Exactly. There's somebody who, you know, that's their thing. Exactly. Partner yourself with the people that you need to partner yourself with so that you, you're getting the overall that you need to get to get the best product that you can get out of it. You know what? You kind of beat me to the... Because the, the final question I was going to ask you, so somewhere near the final question I was going to ask you, is what would you say to an up-and-coming artist or uh, a person, up-and-coming producer who wants to, you know, get ahead and get out there? And, you know, and you just hit a nail on the head as in terms of... Um, Sometimes, you know, you're jack of a lot of trades, but mm -hmm. you really haven't focused in fully on yeah. one. But you just said something very important. Team up with the people around you who that's what they do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And make a team. Yeah. You know, um, that's very, very important, brother. Um, my question is, how can we keep up with you? Um, you've got so many things. Uh, let me ask you this real quick. How has it been uh, being one of the producers for The Mass Singer? Man, it's been, uh, I feel like the, the JV kid that got caught up to the pros. It's, gotcha. it's not, it, we didn't even leave like varsity high school as a top prospect. It was like, right. you know I mean, like, where did y'all find me from? There's so many people in between where y'all were at and where I was at, man. But it was, it was such a blessing to be included. Um, um, as one of the producers in, in this team of ours, which was headed up by Natural, um, and assisted by Aaron Spears. Mm -hmm. uh, Not true, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the homie. Yeah. Got it, got yeah, it. He's, 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 the, he's the head musical director over it all. Gotcha. Um, Aaron was one of the assistant music coordinators, and he pushed to get me involved. Wow, um, wow. So it was just a, a super blessing, number one, but like, Crazy enough, man. The first one of the the first song that we did uh, for this season um, came on last night. Really? Wild enough, yeah. Really? So, um, so y'all got to keep your eyes open. Listen, you all, you got to keep your eyes open. This cat here, Aaron Harden, not only is um, amazing resume and all that good stuff, but as you've been hearing in the talk, very very knowledgeable. Um, with uh with the information of the method behind the what we call the madness. You know what I'm saying? Madness. Listen, it, it can be rough. Madness, yeah. So Aaron, tell everyone how can we reach you on social media and all that good stuff, brother? How does that work? And Groove Works E N T on I think everything. Uh G R O O V E W O R K S E N T. 
Um, Aaron Harden on Facebook, I guess if you and your grandmama still do Facebook. Right. Um, we're still there. Um, Twitter, I, I've been mad and active on Twitter, but GrooveWorks, ENT, and all gotcha. that stuff. So, yeah. And it's Harden, H H A R D I N, no G. No G. There we go. See? Yeah, yeah, that's important. Y'all be search somebody, the wrong person up. You, you know? already know. So, but we're about to we're about to go. Uh, you know, what I'm saying close this segment of the show. First and foremost, I'm gonna have to have you on another time because uh, there's also a method behind the sonic scientist uh, <laughs> term that I, you know, that I tried to coin. But uh, we're gonna talk about like different um, programs, what programs, what software. Sure. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot out here. You know, when we get off the air, I'll tell you about a, a, a new uh, addition to my musical family. Okay. You know, I don't want to yeah, say yeah. that on air, but you know. But we want to leave off with this tune um, that you got. Uh, it's called Suicide Note. Yeah, yeah. You want to explain to us, what is this? Um, so this is actually interesting. This is uh, one of the songs that I did for an artist named Bobby Fino, gotcha. which people don't necessarily recognize that name. He's getting some traction, but he is the former uh, Houston Texans running back, Arian Foster. Oh, got it, um, got it. So we were able to connect uh, a few years ago. Okay. And um, he's, uh, this is this is his homage to um, uh, just life, former life, uh, life involved with music. He said this was probably the most heartfelt song that he's ever written. Gotcha. So, um, wow. yeah, this is his heart on a on a pad, and you know, me playing pads behind that. I yes. <laughs> so this is. Uh this is we're going to be playing. This is called Suicide Note. First and foremost, I want to tell you, everybody, thank you. First and foremost, thank Mr. Aaron Harden for oh, being man. in the studio. Thank you all again for having me. All that me, good man. stuff. Super I'm signing out. Like I said, this is one more episode where I'm sharing uh, people's lives that come through this studio, sharing their, their uh, process with you in order that you can take some very formative steps towards your goal. Remember... Uh, Show a smile to somebody today, you know what I'm saying? Brighten up somebody else's day more over than anything. Brighten up your own because sometimes mm -hmm. we have to encourage ourselves. So thank you for being here. I'm Anthony Chuki Caldwell signing out here on Chopping It Up with Chuk here on DC Radio. In DC, for DC, DC Radio, 96.3 HD4 and DCRadio.gov.